I know the flat earth model is one of the most controversial theories of our time. Honest to god, I've never bought into it. It's just too far-fetched and unrealistic. I'm guessing you'd want to know about the flat earth society. A flat earth society? What's that? Yeah, those who believe the earth is flat. It really baffles me that there are still people like that. Oh yes, there are plenty. And I suppose the members of this society believe that the Earth is not a sphere. Yes, they believe so. Well, actually that's what I came here for. I wanted to hear your take on the Flat Earth Theory. I've seen you gravitate towards it in your work, like me who always basically shrugged it off. It just sounded very outlandish to me. It is a peculiar, mind-boggling theory, I must admit. Well, I'm all ears. Very well, just first allow me to ask something of the people who are going to be watching this. If you really want to investigate this story, you'll have to put yourself in the shoes of the proponents of this theory. Then, you'll understand why they buy into this sort of thing in the first place, and then you can decide for yourself. Does that mean you don't support this theory? I keep my mind open to all ideas of such caliber. I guess we have to keep an open mind too. Of course, we'll need to examine the mindset of so-called flat earthers first. And to start, we shall first go to its roots. You see, until today, all the information we have of our planet Earth, the space and the other planets were provided by NASA. They bring this data to our labs, every image or video of the Earth and the space. Well. They captured all of that. Right. Now the question is, how far can we trust NASA, the same agency whose opponents still speculate whether mankind's ever landed on the moon or not? The whole thing's dangling in the air, pun intended. Tell us about the moon landing. The whole moon landing story and the released footages has caused many people and critics to question its many inconsistencies and technical issues. For instance, for instance, why isn't any star seen from the moon on the TV footage? Why would the US flag wave when there is no air on the moon? Also, camera tracks left on the moon's surface, looking like set design, which could only mean the whole thing was staged in a film studio. Also, in some moments looks like the astronaut is about to fall when it's grabbed by a cable and so many other things that could undermine the entire moon landing NASA mission. If we wanted to talk about whether the moon mission was faked, it could take hours. If you enjoy our videos and want to support the channel, please hit subscribe and click on the bell. Don't forget to like. Thanks. Yeah, I mean 20 years ago perhaps we could have believed that NASA astronauts had really gone to the moon and back, but now many of us think the moon landing is just another bloody hoax. Isn't it ridiculous that NASA claims the original reels of the footage of the moon landing are destroyed? Isn't it odd that we can restore footage from 100 years ago and not the footage from just decades back? Is that really the case? NASA simply claims that they've lost all the video. But why would they do so? Nearly 50 or 60 years ago, TV footage came in, weaker quality, same goes for the feature field. No one has watched the moon landing footage restored in the modern day formats. And if one would ask NASA to return the footage now, many would perhaps realize that it's bogus. That's why they claim it's all been erased and the only thing they've given us is the grainy TV recording of the moon landing in the 60s from the archives. That's odd. NASA says that they've lost all the footage? Just like that? That's right, even strangers that Dan Pettit, a NASA astronaut, claimed that today we no longer have the technology used to land on the moon in the 60s. So there's no going back. He claimed NASA had destroyed that technology. Good lord, that's really crazy. Now, we must ask ourselves, can we truly trust NASA? Good question. Did you know that all the photos released of the Earth 
those that we've seen are basically combined of several images stitched together. Wait a minute, what? Actually, none of the pictures taken by the Earth were seamlessly taken by cameras from afar. Could you explain a bit? What do you mean by that? Well, all these photos have been altered, basically made up because they're still not able to capture the entire planet Earth into a single frame and provide a decent quality rendition. They would have to revolve around the planet, take countless pictures and then paste them all together to give a full view of the Earth crust. Really? For one thing, the International Space Station can only spot 3% of the Earth's surface in every moment. If you zoom in one of the images released, you'll notice that some point singular cloud shapes appear several times. How would that be possible? Unless they've copied and pasted the thing. And has NASA confirmed this too, or is it just part of the same conspiracy theories? A while ago, in a documentary, Robert Simon, senior NASA data visualizer, confirmed this and said that when it comes to the photographing the Earth, there's one problem. And that is, in every orbit the camera has around the Earth, a gap is created. And they fix those gaps with Photoshop. That's why there's a uh, skepticism involved. And of course, we doubt the data because on one hand, we got the NASA shows us, and on the other, there's the claim that perhaps the Earth has been flat all along. It's getting interesting. Well, we all know that the science can only be valid when there is irrefutable evidence around, leaving no place for doubt. But what we're dealing with here is a purely magic instance, where there's no tangible evidence for it. It's basically a theory that everyone happens to agree upon. Wait, uh, what exactly are you referring to? The Big Bang. You know, it all started with the Big Bang. The theory implies that the two atoms collided and the entire universe was shaped. And it all happened in six millionth of a second. Two subatomic particles actually shaped the entire universe. Einstein also presented the gravitation theory which didn't go beyond its premise. Is that so? So, do you know what constitutes a theory? Well, a uh, theory is a proposition based around a group of ideas. Precisely. Well, what we have here is all theoretical. The Big Bang and the gravitation, none of which have been proven. Therefore, it's safe to say we must not take many of these tales and theories at face value. Right. And one final thing to consider is religion. In the Holy Bible, there are passages on the earth and the sky. It says that the earth has four corners and the sky wraps around it like a dome-shaped layer. A dome-shaped layer? Yes, they call the sky a dome above which lies heaven. So we can assume the earth is flat covered by a dome. Exactly. Alright, now tell us what the flat earth theory actually says and why would it exist in the first place? Well, basically it says that the earth beneath us isn't spherically shaped. We're walking on a flat train, a vastness of land the center of which lies the North Pole, and is bordered on the side by Antarctica. Does that mean that if we move on the edges of the world, we'd be facing enclosed walls covered with ice? That's right, if you take a look at the United Nations map, you see what the flat Earth looks like. The planet is bordered on the Earth side. Huh. It's interesting. The reason why this theory took off quickly sounded valid and got people thinking was this. In the late 50s, a treaty was signed among the major figures of those days, which said that no one was allowed to enter the Antarctica. Which meant if you were to get close to the South Pole, you would have been surrounded by coast guards demanding you to leave the place. Of 
course, today some scientists are allowed to travel to the Antarctica, do exploration and conduct research, but, but the place is heavily surveilled by governments, military forces, and even still the scientists would be escorted back with so many guards. I never knew all of that. Did you know that no airplane is allowed to fly over Antarctica? If one happens to do so, it would quickly be turned around. They don't want anyone flying around there. And that's why it's strange. Silly airways have been mapped out for all world airlines. How come? 